<sighs> Man. Rough watch. A rough one. I think that's the earliest I've ever gone down to the media room from my seats uh, to go when I'm boots on the ground at a game this year. I think it went down with like seven minutes left. I'm just like, I don't know if I can take any more of this fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, I, I think I watched them get to like 20. I think they got down to like 16 at one point. But who can even keep up at this in this juncture? Who cares, right? Uh, they got embarrassed, you know. Can I be surprised? Should I be surprised? Why should I be surprised? They just did the same thing to the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis goes down. Eh, not even in the game. So here's the thing. The Miami Heat were like for the longest time this season were able to at least hold their head high at ah, we keep it close. It's always gonna be a dog. But I even said to uh somebody today at halftime, uh, because it was down 19, 20, whatever the hell it was. I was like, don't worry, it'll be it'll be a three point game by the end of this thing. And nope, it just never stopped. Just never stopped. Just continued to get worse in every which way. Everything that was happening for Miami um was unraveling. It was it was a it was a terrible thing that happened today uh with this loss to the Sixers after you went to their building. You you just won a dog fight at the buzzer. Um, you know. We keep saying this turning point's going to happen. I don't know when it is. You know, you think it's going to happen for you, but, you know, you're, you're still stuck at this, like, three-over level. You're taking on all the teams that are in front of you, and, you know, the Knicks seem to be uh, in a good way right now. They're surging a little bit, and you're sitting here and just rock fights with, you know, the, the dregs of the league or you're, you know, losing to teams that sit their best players you know, just a just a terrible outlook on everything. And so tonight, it's funny. I go uh, before the game, um, always go to the visiting coaches press conference, but I went to Doc Rivers because he's a good talker. You know, Doc Rivers, uh, you never know what, it, what he's going to shoot from the hip. He's going to say something. And he was like, he was upset about the schedule. He was pissed off about um, the idea that they had to go to Dallas tomorrow for a 630, you know, a, a 630 local time game. And there was some, you know, stuff in the earlier in the day of like, oh, Joel Embiid's questionable all of a sudden. And these mother bleepers in Philadelphia decide we're not even going to play Joel. We just played him. You know what? The Heat beat us. Maybe we'll face him in the playoffs. Let's just completely flip it on its head. We'll sit Joel. We'll go run and gun style. We're going to go run their ass and shoot threes like a mother bleeper. And we'll see what happens. You know what? Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll catch him tonight. This team can't shoot to save their life. Let's see what happens. And man, got to hand it to him. Worked like a charm. They lulled the heat in with a cozy little 38-34 first quarter. Ah, isn't this fun, Miami Heat? We're playing modern basketball. We're we're having fun. Tyrese Max, yeah, he's getting it going. Who just, I mean, he continues to light up Miami no matter what. Um, and you know, and and what do you know? You know the Miami Heat who who went into that and you know thought you were playing a, a cute little game there in the first quarter. You know, both teams. You know, all right, they beat you a four nine in the in the three point range. You're one for four, but not too bad. It's like you didn't even really try from three. You know, fun game. Jimmy getting a couple turnovers. Kevin Love's off to a nice start. We're having fun. And then the second quarter happens. Max Struess hits a three-point shot to put the heat up 43-39. There was 10.05 left in the second quarter. I think in real actual time, the Miami Heat probably did not hit another three-point shot probably for two hours of clock time. I didn't, don't sign me up for that. I don't know the exact time. I know it went up to like the eight minute mark of the fourth quarter. Probably, I think it was like 13 to 14 straight missed threes. It it was incredible. Just when you think this team can't top, it's brick laying. Their third little pigging. They go out there and build the biggest house of bricks. It was incredible. 
from from 10:03. I remember the basket. Timeout. And then the Sixers came out and they went on like a, a huge run. I think it was like 12-0. Maybe it was even more than that. Uh I think maybe it was like yeah, I think it was like they went on like a, a 12-0 or like a 15 to 2 run. It just blew the doors off Miami. And <laughs> there was like at one point, Kevin Love came in, shot an air ball. Then the next position, he gets like right under the basket. There's no time left. Kicks it to Gabe Vincent with no time on the shot clock, which I got to be honest with you, was probably a better thing because it was like the least dangerous thing Gabe Vincent did tonight other than just torpedo every time he had somebody who was either fouling someone, turning the ball over, or bricking a shot. Um, But the moment of all moments, honestly, and this was funny because, you know, PJ had this interview, talked about this in in another video about like, oh, well, you know, Miami, they didn't want to give me the full mid-level. I wanted the full mid-level. You know, they offered him, you know, 26-5 instead of 33 over three years, you know, probably with tax minimal you know it's like a d wade thing you know it's a matter of the respect not this whole hocus pocus with the salary cap and the and the taxes and whatnot and pj tucker i felt like he had the death knell of the game honestly he had this one point where he just out rebounds everybody on the heat out muscles them gets kicked for an open three philly goes up 16 that was all she wrote it was it was like over from then on out like no comeback. James Harden was hitting threes over Bam like crazy. Um, and there was like, a, you know, like Bam was like the only guy scoring in that quarter too. I think it was like literally since that Max Schroes three, I think it was like one Kevin Love basket and the rest was like Bam jumpers. Just a complete toilet bowl of offense. Just awful. And I know they're going to hang their hat on defense. We let him too comfortable. Cool, dude. Here's the thing, though. You couldn't hit water if you fell out of a boat. It was horrible to watch. And so you think, all right, we're going to try. We're going to try and and try as we may, try as we might. We're going to go for it. And they played that third quarter. The lead stayed at, like, 20. And Spo, God love him. They had like a little blip of life, a little 6-0 run. Jimmy and Bam get it going. The Heat get it down to like 11. He's like, oh, maybe this is the moment. He keeps Jimmy and Bam in there the whole time. And, and, and just like Jimmy starts trying to take on like everybody, like one on four, dudes, doesn't work. It all collapses. They go back up 20 points. It was just rough. Then they played swag surf. You would think I want to swag surf down 20. Like, respectfully, I'll pass on swag surf. And I know they have to do it. And and respect to to Uptown Dale and the crew for getting it done. They got to do what they got to do. Game Ops is going to game op. You know, give out. You got to do all the moves. Free pizza, free t-shirts, whatever it does to keep the spirits up. But just awful. Jimmy Butler ended up going back to the locker room. They said it was for a sore knee. He did have his knee iced after the game, so I have no reason to doubt him, but I wouldn't be surprised if his knee was just disgusted with the rest of the team. You could blame his joints at this point. Sitting there, like looking across, looking at Kyle Lowry, having goo-goo eyes for Kyle Lowry. Oh, please, Kyle, please come back. Please, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't want Kate Vincent to start anymore. I'm thinking back to the pregame where, like, some uh, reporter asked Eric Spolstra about Ka- Goran Dragic, and they were very dismissive of it. Dismissive, like they didn't want to talk about it. In almost like a, uh, in either a suspicious way or a dismissive way. I don't really know what to make of it. Coach, is there any interest from the team to uh, in a possible reunion with Goran Dragic now that he's a, he's a free agent? I haven't, uh, yeah, I haven't thought about that. Like, I don't know what that is. I don't know. No, I haven't thought about it. And even like the the media I was like, yeah, we're, we're not talking about that. I'm like, why? You can. He's a free agent. It's not like you're tampering. He's perfectly natural question. He is a uh, he is a former player. I guess because you don't want to say, oh, we have to drop somebody. You know, 
the heat never want to do that. Like, oh, it's whew, hanging over. But it was uh, it was very, uh, very sudden. Not that Goran, why would Goran even want to come to this right now? It's a mess. Very down today. <sighs> All right. Talk to you guys later.